this review I will present what I currently deem the best computer light gun system, the JB 4 points light gun or JB 4 PLG for short. I will talk about the origin and the standout features and then show my personal unit. The review is concluded with a brief interview with the inventor of the system Jean-Baptiste Bongrand. Light guns which rely on infrared light sources as reference positions have been around for a very long time and the concept wasn't invented by Nintendo. The earliest gun I am aware of which uses this technology is the Philips Peacekeeper Revolver which was released in 1994. EMS, which is one of today's best known manufacturers of PC light guns, also offered its first IR guns before the Nintendo Wii. In episode 145 I reviewed the E-Real Games RGTG1, which is another gun that predates the Wii. Much like the Apple iPod for digital music players and the iPhone for smartphones, in many people's minds the IR gun technology is inseparable connected to the Nintendo console though. In my opinion this is a shame as the tracking on the Wii was laggy, inaccurate and imprecise. Don't get me wrong, I think there is fun to be had with the Wii gun games, but I feel people tended to project many of the weaknesses of this particular system onto the technology itself, which isn't justified at all. One of the reasons the Wii didn't perform very well is caused by its reliance on a two reference points design. The seals in something the IR sensor can witness as a line. While this allows useful positional tracking, it's vulnerable to changes in distance and angle relative to the reference bar. Basically, after completed calibration, the player shouldn't move much, as else potentially an offset will be introduced. This doesn't mean, however, that all two reference point light gun designs were bad. With a bit of careful data handling, the Namco G-Con 3 and the Ultimark Aim Track, for example, performed very nicely. My favorite console of the 8th generation is another proof that the two position reference technique can be adapted well, the SureShot HD. I have reviewed the system in episode 36. I don't mean to hate on the Nintendo Wii and in fact I have devoted it episode 138 in which I explained how to get the best possible experience on it. Systems like the JB4 PLG that rely on 4 and more points rather than just 2 are able to perceive the information as a trapezoid-like polygon rather than a simple line. This allows the sensor to better judge how it is facing the target. Such systems are typically less prone to offsets when it comes to changes in distance and angle and for a given position they are usually more accurate. A good example of a light gun that uses this technique is the EMS Top Gun 3. Many modern arcade games such as Namco's Time Crisis 5 also rely on reference light systems that consist of multiple light sources. In late September 2019 Jean-Baptiste, who goes by the username JB, made a post on the Arcade Controls forum in which he introduced the JB for PLG system. JB was already known and respected for all the work he shared in the community and therefore it comes to no surprise that people took him and the system seriously. Curious people adapted the system and did some testing. JB carefully listened to the feedback and bug reports. The system was continuously improved and appended with new features. This became somewhat of a self-propelling loop as the increasing performance of the system lured more and more people to try it for themselves, who then in turn gave fresh feedback. The necessary hardware is do-it-yourself and can be thought of as ports list and instructions. The graphical user interface, which helps players to set everything up, is paid software and can be obtained for currently 15 US dollars directly from JB. To me, the star of the show is the perfect accuracy that can be had with the JB4 PLG and that's why I build a unit myself. There are a lot of other features though that make this system stand out from other PC light gun products. The latency is extremely low. It lays around 4 milliseconds. This is so fast that some players, me included, prefer to set up the gun in such a way that the delay is deliberately a bit higher to behave more like a CRT gun. The system supports force feedback. 
Apart from the usual independent force feedback, the gun can be set up in such a way that the game takes over full control over the force feedback. In such a case, the gun will just rumble and or reciprocate when the game commands to do so. Very similarly, players may attach RGB LEDs to the gun, which can be set up to precisely mimic the arcade marquee light behavior. Here again, a game independent light behavior can be chosen. The operation of an already set up gun doesn't require any special software. The gun will act like a mouse and that's it. All calculations are made by the microcontroller which is located in the gun. Thus, the operation of the JB4PLG just needs minimal computer resources. If the player doesn't want to, the calibration doesn't have to be ever repeated as it is saved on the device. Together with the fact that the system is less prone to offsets than their two-point counterparts when it comes to variations of distance and or angle between screen and player, calibration just has to be repeated to sustain absolute perfection in accuracy. Especially if the player pairs the gun with a wide angle lens, the minimum required distance to the screen is greatly decreased compared to two reference points designs. The IR sensor doesn't have to see all four reference lights at once all the time. That's just the scenario for the most reliable tracking, but the system is capable to triangulate positions using any number of points between 1 and 4. Optionally, a Nintendo Wii Nunchuck controller can be added to the system via the standard connector if the player feels the need for a joystick. Any screen size and aspect ratio is supported and the gun stays tracked while being off-screen for reliable off-screen shoot reloading functionality. That the hardware portion is do-it-yourself might scare some people, but in my opinion this also brings some very attractive benefits. A good example is the price of the system. A slew of Atmega 32U4 microcontrollers can be used. Some of these can be obtained for as less as 3 US dollars. The IR sensor used in this project is the same that most other IR guns and the Nintendo Wii use. Thus, if somebody is interested in saving a bit money by avoiding buying ready-made sensors, the necessary parts can be taken from an old Wii remote. Just like Arcade Control's forum user MySly0210 did in an exciting experiment. Another advantage is that the DIY approach allows the users to make the controllers exactly to their personal likings and preferences. I will briefly show what kind of hardware setup I ended up with myself. As a base I used a broken GC2, which is a GunCon 2 clone that I have reviewed in episode 147. I opened it and removed all capacitors to avoid having them leaking in the distant future. To have more room to work I also removed some pin headers. At this opportunity I would like to recommend destroying certain components prior removal. If the PCB isn't of a high quality, solder pads are likely to rip off when desoldering components otherwise, especially if these have a multi-pin footprint. Many low-cost PCBs are never cleaned off their excess flux. I took the opportunity to give the board a good cleaning with soapy water and 2-propanol. I soldered wires to suited positions to access certain button controls. For future reference I recommend making a note about the wire identities and store the note at the same location as the gun. If the PCB carries residual parts, it's a good idea to cut the traces of interest to make sure no interference is picked up. I decided to put the microcontroller where the rumble motor used to be, because that way I can secure its location without using any glue or tape. To do so, I had to cut some walls in the shell. As at Mega32U4 microcontroller, I used an Arduino Micro, which is slightly bigger than what most people used for the project. Still, it is tiny and gets dwarfed even by a lighter. I grouped functionally related wires with shrink tube, routed the bundles along a suited path, and then made the connections to the microcontroller, cutting any slack wire. I was lucky and had the possibility to attach the IR sensor with nuts to walls inside the shell. As light sources I wanted to make something myself. 
I designed tiny boards which carry three SMD IR LEDs each. They are put on a tiny heatsink with a thin sheet of phase change thermal pad in between as insulator. The components are held together with thermal glue. I initially designed the light sources with a 5 volts power supply in mind, but making tests with my infrared camera, I concluded that the boards were almost as bright at 4 volts while staying noticeably cooler. I attached the lights with removable sticky gel pads to the TV screen in my living room. I am not going to remove them anytime soon though, as I am very happy with the JB4PLG. As always, I made the board files available on my website, so that anybody can reproduce them. Users of the JB4PLG had great success using wide angle and fisheye smartphone lenses in conjunction with the IR sensor. The usage thereof cuts down the necessary minimal distance a lot, while not affecting the accuracy noticeably, if at all. Personally, I went with a reversible solution. I made a removable muscle break of air drying foam putty. It slips right onto the muscle and presses a 0.65 times wide angle lens firmly against the IR sensor. Theoretically, best results are achieved by removing the IR pass filter from the sensor assembly and aligning the lens perfectly on the raw sensor itself. The IR pass filter is then put on top of the lens. Personally, I really like the JB for PLG. It is my new go-to light gun for PC games. Prior to that, I used the arcade guns variant of the Ultimate Aim Track, which I still like very much. I recommend every interested person who is capable to build a JB for PLG system to do so. People who don't like soldering could consider contracting a model to build a unit for them, as the cost in materials is so low that even after paying for software and assembly it won't break the bank. JB was so kind to allow me interviewing him. In audio I will summarize the questions and answers while showing the full content on the screen. Upon being asked about the project's inspiration, JB told me that he was looking for a light gun system for himself to use. He tried many solutions, but none of these left him completely satisfied. Do-it-yourself projects and discussions with the community encouraged him to try something on his very own. Since the project's beginning, it gained lots of traction and JB is keen to continue. I asked JB about the biggest challenges he faced. He told me that because for many aspects he searched for independent solutions from scratch, he figured out techniques which are very innovative. Coming up with such concepts is sometimes challenging, but very rewarding to him at the same time. When being asked whether he's using his own system, JB admitted that currently, while he's developing updates and improvements for his system, he is mainly testing and coding for it. But he wouldn't have the motivation to carry on if he didn't enjoy the system himself and he is looking forward to use it more frequently in the future when he has the time to do so. Besides light gun games, JB enjoys video games from every genre, both new and old. His favorite light gun controller is the Namco G-Con 45, as for its high compatibility to great video games and its interesting technical properties and quirks. The early Virtua Cop and Time Crisis titles are among JB's favorite light gun games. He got his fondness to the genre from these games and they are still some of his preferred choices to use for testing his light gun system. Upon being asked what the future will bring to the JB for PLG system, JB answered that he is about to increase accuracy even more. The key to this will be a new calculation routine and extra sensor measurements. My acknowledgement goes to end product from the Arcade Controls Forum, who told me about the JB for PLG and introduced me to Jean Baptiste. This is the end of the review. My name is Ben, I thank you for viewing.